17,000 years ago, in the frozen silence of Siberia, a teenage girl was laid to rest by the Yenisei River. Her bones slept beneath ice and soil for millennia. Until one day, scientists lifted her DNA from the ground and discovered something extraordinary. Hidden in her genes was a flicker of light, the world's first trace of blonde hair. That single mutation would outlive empires, cross continents, and shape the face of Northern Europe, a color born in darkness, carried through migrations, and woven into myth. This isn't just a story about hair, it's the story of how nature painted history, how a spark of gold survived the Ice Age and became a symbol of survival, beauty, and desire. Before we follow that golden thread across time, tap subscribe to Stone and Bone, where we uncover the secrets written in our DNA and the forgotten migrations that made us who we are. Every story of light begins with a spark. For blonde hair, that spark was a tiny change, one letter flipped in the vast code of our DNA. Scientists call it RS1282156, a mutation in the KITLG gene. Think of it as nature's dimmer switch, a single tweak that told hair cells to produce less melanin, softening the color from deep brown to pale gold. It didn't make skin lighter. It didn't change eyes. It simply dimmed the pigment in each strand of hair a small adjustment, but one that forever altered the human palatate. And this first appeared not in Europe, but far to the east, in ancient Siberia. At a site called Afontova Gora, near the Yenisei River, archaeologists uncovered two skeletons, one a woman, the other a teenage girl, 17,000 years old. Inside their DNA, scientists found the earliest known carriers of this blonde allele, uh, the very beginning of light hair in human history. That flicker of gold would travel far. From frozen tundra to open steppe, carried quietly inside those who followed the herds and rivers westward. Unseen, unnamed, but unstoppable. The Ice Age ended. Forests rose. Rivers carved new paths across the land. And with every step, that Siberian gene kept moving. Passed through families tribes, generations. By 10,000 BC, it reached the eastern hunter-gatherers of what is now Ukraine and the Baltic. Dark-eyed, sun-browned people, whose children sometimes emerged with hair the color of wheat and firelight. Blondness was still rare, a quiet ember in a world of darker tones. But it spread the way stories do, slowly, invisibly, through the people who carried it. Every migration west was a thread in a much larger tapestry, one that would, millennia later, ignite across northern Europe. Each family, each child, was a bridge between Siberia's frozen heart and Europe's green edge. Would you have guessed blonde hair began not in Europe, but in the icy reaches of Siberia? Tell me in the comments. Because this single detail rewrites what most of us think about ancestry and identity. As the glaciers melted, the north opened. A new world of forests, rivers, and light. Into this wilderness came two peoples who would unknowingly reshape human appearance forever. From the west came the western hunter-gatherers, dark-haired, strikingly blue-eyed. From the east came the eastern hunter-gatherers, descendants of Siberia, still carrying that faint blonde allele. Here, in the cold valleys and coasts of ancient Scandinavia, these lineages met. Families formed, children were born, and for the first time, blue eyes met golden hair in the same face. Nature, by chance, painted a combination that would one day define the image of the North. It wasn't yet common, but it was unforgettable. The mingling of East and West had created something new, a glow that would outlast the Ice Age and echo through thousands of years of descendants. Across the fjords, across generations, the golden thread and the sapphire eye became intertwined a living symbol of two worlds colliding. Then came thunder from the east, hooves pounding across the steppe. Around 3000 BC, a new migration surged into Europe, the Yamnaya. They were herders and riders, carrying metal, language, and genes that would transform the continent. For a long time, many believed they brought blonde hair to Europe, 
but modern DNA tells a different story. Most Yamnaya were dark-haired. Their power came not from color, but from movement. It was their descendants, the corded ware in the north, and the bell beaker cultures in the west, who spread and mixed with local Europeans. And with that mixing, blonde hair flourished. Europe became a living mosaic of ancient lineages, Siberian light, steppe vitality, and Western endurance. And from that fusion, the familiar face of Northern Europe began to emerge. Would you have expected the story of blonde hair to pass through so many peoples? Hunters, herders, wanderers. Tell me what surprises you most so far. I'd love to know what part of this journey changed how you picture your own ancestry. In the far north, winter ruled more than half the year. The sun was weak, the skies gray, and the air cold enough to make light itself seem rare. Here, nature began to favor those who could capture every bit of sunlight they could get. Pale skin and lighter hair worked together like a natural lens, absorbing more UV, helping the body produce vital vitamin D. In a land where the sun barely rose, that meant survival. Generation after generation, the pale glow that began in Siberia quietly became an advantage. But survival wasn't the only force at work. Humans notice difference, and desire often follows it. In early farming societies, blonde hair became a rare spark in the crowd. Unusual, radiant, unforgettable. And so, beauty itself joined evolution's design. Studies suggest rare traits can be favored by attraction, each generation choosing partners who carried that glint of gold. What began as biology turned into preference, and preference became pattern. So tell me, which do you think shaped it more, the hunger to survive or the instinct to be seen? I'd love to hear your take in the comments, because both forces left their mark on every strand of blonde hair that exists today. As humans began to tell stories, that golden color found a second life in myth. To the Greeks, Aphrodite's golden hair symbolized divine beauty. In Rome, blondness became a mark of allure and status. Noble women even dyed their hair to mimic it. In the Norse North, the goddess Sif was crowned with shining gold, her hair a living emblem of fertility and the sun's return. But it didn't stop in myth. Across Egypt, nobles wore wigs spun with yellowed fibers to imitate the same hue. Centuries later, medieval artists painted saints and angels with fair hair. Purity turned to light itself. From Botticelli's Venus to Tolkien's elves, the idea endured. Blonde hair wasn't just human, it was otherworldly. Yet history has also distorted that glow, twisting it into ideals of power or purity that biology never intended. That's the paradox of color, what nature created through chance. Culture often rewrites through meaning. But underneath the myth and the misunderstanding, there remains the same spark, a thread of survival and beauty, first carried by that Siberian girl in the ice. For a long time, people believed blonde hair belonged only to Europe, but nature, as always, had other plans. On the Solomon Islands in the Pacific, far from the tundra or fjords, scientists discovered islanders with naturally blonde hair and dark skin. Their golden color came not from K1TLG, but a completely different mutation in the TYRP1 gene. It's proof that blonde hair evolved twice in two distant corners of the world, entirely independently. That means evolution, when given the same challenge, sometimes writes the same answer. Light hair wasn't just a European accident. It was a universal possibility. Even across Africa and Oceania, some children are born with pale or coppery hair that darkens as they grow, echoes of ancient diversity hidden in the genome of humankind. Today, less than 2% of the world's population is naturally blonde. But in places like Finland and Estonia, that number rises to nearly 80%, living maps of ancient migrations still visible on human heads. And though most blonde hair we see today comes from a bottle, the truth remains, the color survived ice ages, migrations, and myths to reach us. A tiny genetic shift that outlived time itself. 
17,000 years ago, a girl in Siberia carried the first spark of gold in her genes. She never knew her mutation would cross continents, that it would survive in the bones of hunters, the blood of farmers, and the faces of kings and dreamers. Blonde hair began as an accident of DNA, but it became a mirror, reflecting how survival, love, and imagination can all shape what it means to be human. Every strand of blonde hair today is a message from the Ice Age, a whisper from that girl by the Yenisei River, a story of how light found its way through the dark. If this journey changed how you see ancestry, tell me in the comments. Which part of this story surprised you most? And if you want more stories hidden in our DNA, tap like, share this with someone curious about history, and subscribe to Stone and Bone. Because history, like genes, only lives when we pass it on.